Um, hi everyone, uh, my name is Arti. I have worked in various roles in tech for the last decade. Currently, I'm an engineer at Simply Business and I work mostly with uh, React and also Rails. Um, today's talk is uh, getting started with Storybook. I will be showing you examples of code, but I will not be live coding because we all know how that ends up. Um, but the slides, uh, I think Duncan, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I can pass on the slides somehow. Uh, if you want to do this on your own a little bit later. Um, so already in the chat, someone asked what is Storybook and they've never heard of it before. Uh, so you're at the right place. Uh, Storybook is a JavaScript tool or framework that helps you build, organize and document your UI systems. Um, it is officially supported for React, Vue, Angular and web components but there is open source support for Svelte, uh, Preact, HTML, and a couple of others. Um, who is it for? It's, it's this extremely powerful tool, and today we can take a look at just a small slice of the ways it can help you and others on your team. This means engineers, testers, product managers, uh, designers, and other stakeholders can all really benefit from it. And, um, Let's take a look at an example of storybook. So this is the Lonely Planet um, storybook. Uh, you can Google it and um, find the link to it. it uh, you can see they've listed all their components in one place, their typography, um, fonts, icons, design tokens, uh, components like cards, basic, with video, et cetera. And as, this, uh, as you can see, some of the many uses are um, documentation for your components, um, where you can easily show people uh, what the typography colors and stuff are. And this is especially useful for designers, but I'd say every, everyone on the team can benefit. Um, you have the ability to see what components look like either individually or composed together. Um, you can view components on different screen sizes, really useful for testers and engineers. Um, you can do real-time editing of your components. This is useful for the entire team to play around and see how different variables have an effect on our components. And um, accessibility testing is primarily for engineers, testers, and SEO managers, but really we should all care about accessibility. So let's start and take a look at how we can use Storybook. Um, I've created this dummy React app. Well, it's not a dummy app. It's, a, it's an actual React app. Um, with some typical components like your logo, card, title, subtitle, button, header, etc. It's a cat judging app. Uh, you can either judge a cat to be extremely cute or dangerously cute. All cats are winners, obviously. And let's add storybook to this. So the thing you need to do to get this started is in your terminal, just um, in the root of your project, run npx sb in it, this um, command. This installs any dependencies, scripts, and config that you need to run and build Storybook. Once that's run, you should um, see this in your terminal, which will tell you that you've successfully installed Storybook. Um, and then if you want to run it, uh, the server, you have to just run the command yarn Storybook. It also adds a couple of new folders to your code. Um, one of them is the dot Storybook folder. And the other is the stories subfolder in the source uh, folder. Um, dot storybook has your config files that you can use to customize storybook. And we'll see how that's done a bit later. The um, SRC stories uh, folder has a, a list of uh, example stories that get auto-generated when, when you install storybook. You don't have to delete these stories uh, right away. In fact, I find it quite useful to have them around to see how things are implemented and add them. Uh, I would suggest add, adding it to your git ignore file so that you can refer to it when you want to figure out how to do something and you're lost. Um, so let's look at these example stories. So this is what you get by default with Storybook. Um, this is the welcome or intro page that Storybook automatically generates for you. Um, they've used MDX, CSS, and HTML. And um, let's write our own so that we can see how that's done. Um, so to add your own intro page, you need to create a file with a dot stories extension. 
you can put this file anywhere. I have put it in the source components folder, but anywhere in the source folder and Storybook knows uh, with a dot stories extension and Storybook will know automatically to um, render the file in your Storybook um, browser page. You can name it anything, like I said, I've called it intro.stories.mdx. Again, you can create this in JavaScript or TypeScript. I've just used MDX because it's easy. Um, whatever title you give it here, so I've said hello world, is what will show up in your sidebar in Storybook, which we'll see in a second. And then I've added some generic text and um, some links and lists. And now if you refresh Storybook, you'll see right away that it has rendered your intro page and it's got the title that we provided it. Um, one of the things that Storybook provides to extend the use of uh, the functionality is add-ons. And the first add-on we look at is viewports. Uh, this comes out of the box. And if you look at the toolbar at the top, you'll see that by default, you get three viewports, which is small mobile, large mobile and tablet. And you can use this to test um, what your app looks like or your components look like on various screen sizes. Um, of course, you can add more viewports. Uh, Storybook gives you a list of um, viewports called initial viewports. That's about 15 commonly used uh, devices for both iOS and Android. Um, you would go to do this, you go to your config file for preview called preview.js and you'd import all those initial viewports from Storybook. Once you've done that, you add that initial viewport uh, to the viewport object in the parameters. And now if you refresh Storybook, you should see that you can pretty much see a list of those 15-ish devices that I mentioned, um, basically iPhone and some Android ones. Um, what if you're working on a specific device that's not listed here? Like let's say you're building an app for the Nokia 3310. You can add that as well. Um, again, going back to the preview.js file, you would uh, create a custom viewports object and then add the details about the device you want in to show up in the viewports. In this case, I've just added Nokia as the name and then the width and height of the screen. Uh, once you've done that, you then add um, the custom reports object to the parameters. And now when you refresh, you should see Nokia has been added to that dropdown list. And you can view what your app looks like on the Nokia phone. And next, let's get started with adding our own stories. So. Throughout this uh, talk, for the most part, I've used a card component as an example. And here is our card component, nothing special about it. It's um, just got some props uh, like title, image, alt text, et cetera, and then uh, what gets rendered. Uh, to write the story for this, we will create a .stories.js file. Uh, I created it in the card folder uh, because that's standard practice. You don't have to, but uh, that's the best practice to do that. Um, to do the rest of it, uh, other than your expected uh, imports like React and uh, your card component, uh, you create um, an, a default export, which contains the metadata that controls how Storybook will list your stories. Um, later, when we use add-ons, any add-on specific information will also be provided in the default export. For now, we'll just add a title, uh, the component that we want to render in our story. Um, next, we create a function called template. This is basically a template of how you want your args to map to what is rendered. Think of args as your props for the component. Um, after that, we bind this template function to the story we want to show and create. It can be reused across any other stories you create, and we'll see how to do that in a bit. Uh, I've created a story here called kitten card and then provided the args for the kitten card, which are just props basically to show up the, to show the image and title and all text, etc. And now if you refresh your storybook screen, 
you'll see that the kitten card story has been added. Um, we can now easily add more card stories using the setup we just created. So let's say you wanted another card component story to see what uh, a bigger image would do to your card. Um, we can add this um, extra bit to the card stories. Uh, in this case, I'm just creating a new const called um, card with bigger image. You can call it whatever you want. Um, and we're reusing the template by binding it uh, to the card with bigger image. And we are also reusing the args we provided the other story. You don't have to reuse it, but it's convenient. And the only thing that changes here is the image because we were given it an image with bigger dimensions. And now if you refresh, you'll see the same card with a bigger image. And um, on the left, you should see the other story we've added. Uh, another cool add-on is the source add-on. And if you want to let your storybook users see the source code for your stories, uh, this is what you would use. It's not installed by default, so you'll have to run this um, in your um, source code um, in your terminal. And once you run this command, you have to also update the other config file, which is main.js, and make sure that this add-on is listed in your add-ons list. Um, once you do that, you can see that the card story is now uh, listed in the story tab in Storybook. Um, another really cool uh, add-on, which comes out of the box, is the background add-on. Um, this is used to see what your components will look like against different backgrounds, as the name suggests. Um, I've created this uh, header story already. And in the toolbar, there's an option that you can see um, for the background color of your page. So you can see right away that by default, you get light and dark. Uh, you can, of course, add custom backgrounds that are specific to your app. So let's say your app has certain uh, limited colors that can be used as a background. You can add those to the dropdown. And the way you do that is you go back to your preview JS file. And in your parameters, you add a new object called background. And you can give it the optional um, default color to show. If you don't show that, it'll just be plain white. And then you define uh, the values that you want your other colors to have. So I've just given it some default neon and dark. Um, and now when you refresh, you should see those three options and you can um, check what your components will look like with those backgrounds. Do not use that ugly background though. Um, one of the most powerful add-ons is the dock add-on, which again is installed out of the box. Um, it does several things. Uh, one of them is you can see the code you need to render your component um, and copy it easily and paste it uh, wherever you need to call it. The other cool thing it does is it shows you all the props that are used in the component. And along with the props, it shows you the prop values or as the storybook calls these controls, not uh, prop values. And um, uh, well, in this example, it says uh, three baby cats for the title. And you'll see that that's the exact thing that we've used in, in our card. Um, not used, but rendered in our card. And you'll notice that the description and default are empty right now. And that's because we haven't used prop types or um, default props. And so let's see what happens when we add that. Um, I'm back in my card component and I've added some basic prop types. They're all string except the children. And when we now go back to storybook, you'll see it's told you exactly what kind of prop it expects for all these um, values. And if we add prop types next, oh, sorry. Um, prop types are basically if you, um, sorry, not prop types, default props are if you, if someone renders a component without providing these props, uh, this is a fallback that will uh, be applied to the card. And now when you refresh it, you should see that we've got all the default prop types showing up as well. So you can see this is super useful. Um, as we talked about controls earlier, let's, let's see what else you can do with them. So um, 
Currently, this control, uh, you can change things like the title to see how a really long string, for instance, will affect your component. And you can see it breaks my component, so that needs to be fixed. Um, but you can also do things with it like add, um, change colors of your components. And to do that, let's add a background color to our card component. So I've just added a really simple background color prop and uh, some style tags to render that color. Uh, and now, uh, oh, and you don't see it in the screenshot, but I have also added the prop types and default props. So when we go back to Storybook now, you should see that um, we've got the background color showing up and you can change that um, by using either the color names or hex values to do this. Uh, and this is super useful, but it's not very user-friendly. It'd be much nicer to have a color picker here. And we can do that by going into our stories and in the default export, uh, we add what's called archetypes and we tell it which uh, prop we want the archetypes for, which is background color in this case, and we give it the control color. And now if we refresh the screen, you'll see that we've got a color picker and it's much easier to pick the colors from here. Uh, Storybook also has a date control that you can use in exactly the same way. Instead of uh, control color, you'd say control date and it would have a date time dropdown. Obviously you won't use it for a background color um, val um, field element, but you can use that for a date and time field. And now my favorite add-on, which is the accessibility add-on. Uh, accessibility, in my opinion, is not just the ethical thing to do, but it's a legal requirement in many places, and you also get SEO benefits out of making your app accessible. Um, surprisingly and disappointingly, it does not come out of the box, so you have to run this command to um, get it uh, running on Storybook. And once you've done that, again, go to your config and make sure that your main.js file has the uh, storybook ally add-on. Um, let's refresh and see immediately you get this um, color blindness emulator dropdown, uh, which you can use to see what the site will look like to your uh, users that might be colorblind. And you can see the changes as you um, select the type of color blindness. Um, in addition to that, you also get automatic accessibility testing. You get a report of what's passed and any violations that um, you may have had in your code. Uh, you can also see which element is causing the issue uh, by having it highlighted. So in this case, it's the button with the red background and white text. Um, another cool feature of this accessibility uh, add-on is the real-time accessibility testing. So for instance, you can use that color picker that we just saw to change the colors and see how they affect your accessibility. Uh, for instance, here I've made both the foreground and background the same color, and right away you see that we've got a whole bunch of errors. Obviously, it's a really facetious example, but you can see how easily um, and quickly you can test different colors and the effect they have on your um, store, uh, on your cards and components. Um, so this is, like I mentioned earlier, a really a small subset of things you can do with Storybook. There's a whole lot of official uh, add-ons, which this is a screenshot of all the official add-ons. And there's a whole bunch of community-driven add-ons as well that you can use to make your app easily testable and help others that use your app, whether that's testers or engineers or product managers or designers. Uh, I would highly recommend taking a look at the official Storybook docs. Um, they also have a whole bunch of very comprehensive tutorials on there to get you up and running. And that is it for me. Thank you.